Welcome back everyone to a brand new skill cap video. Get ready, cause 11.8 is full of insane new picks you aren't gonna wanna miss. Solo lane Lee Sin is actually OP now after the buff to his E along with a broken build for enchanter supports. That and so much more as we break down the most OP off meta champs and builds going around for this patch. If there's anything new flying under the radar for 11.8 that we didn't feature in this video, then be sure to fill everyone in down in the comments below. We know all our viewers are big brain challenger players, so we are sure that you guys have got some crazy new off meta strategies to share with us all. For more content like this in the coming patches, don't forget to drop a sub if you haven't already. And with that said, let's get into it. Top lane Rumble is finally back in an amazing spot for 11.8 and a new off meta build has started to emerge as a result of his buffs. Rumble's passive now grants him 50% attack speed when overheated and his passive also deals more damage. In turn, this makes building a Nasher's Tooth so much stronger and gives Rumble ridiculously strong all in power. Nasher's provides you with attack speed and extra on hit damage so it makes Rumble a legitimate threat even when overheated. Prior to this rumble buff, you'd be nothing more than a sitting duck in fights as his passive damage potential was nothing special. Now that rumble can actually deal a good amount of damage while overheated, it not only makes his all in stronger but his consistent dueling strength as well. The complete build will consist of a rift maker rush into Nashers and then Zanya's third. Runes are also very off meta with this setup as you'll be running conqueror instead of comet. Rumble stacks Conqueror very quickly and since this build of Riftmaker into Nashers is heavily focused around your consistent dueling power, Conqueror works perfectly. Running Precision also allows you to take Alacrity, granting you bonus attack speed to make the on hit damage from passive even stronger. Triumph and Coup de Gras are the other two primary runes. For secondary, grab Taste of Blood and Ultimate Hunter. And remember, if you want to improve fast and get the rank you've always wanted, then check out our hyper improvement system at skillcap.com. We have professional courses by the top players, smurf commentaries where a challenger player walks you through how to climb out of every rank from iron to diamond, and we upload tons of new exclusive guides to our website every week. In fact, we're so confident you'll improve using our system that if you don't climb at least five divisions while actively using Skillcapped, you can claim a full refund, so there's no risk. What are you waiting for? Check out Skillcapped.com and get the rank you've always wanted. Link in the description below. A new setup for Gnar that world champion Naguri has been spamming consists of running Hail of Blades as your keystone. As we all know, Gnar has a three hit passive, and thanks to the three quick autos that Halo Blades provides, the synergy is very strong. You have much more kill threat in lane when running HOB over Grasp, and you can even argue more survivability as well. When Gnar procs his three hit passive, you receive a burst of damage along with a dart of move speed. Brocking this move speed is so vital for Gnar to peel off high mobility champions like Aurelia, so Halo Blades works very well in that regard. Every single time Naguri has gone up against an Aurelia over the past couple days, he has used this Halo Blade setup. Much of the early game tankiness from running Resolve actually comes from taking bone plating, so you pick this up as a secondary rune and maintain that durability. Naguri opts for Taste of Blood, Ghost Poro, and Ravenous Hunter to complete his primary runes. Bone Plating and Overgrowth are taken for secondaries. Stridebreaker into Black Cleaver and then Sterix is the core build. Mundo Top has flown up the tier list for 11.8 and is one of the most underrated picks in the entire game. The effectiveness of Mundo's passive was increased from 1.5 all the way up to 2.5% which gives him insane health regen. Health refund on Cleaver hit was buffed by 50% which is huge for his early sustain. These two buffs just make Mundo so much stronger in lane and actually allow him to go toe to toe with lots of the meta champions. Pick Mundo into Mordekaiser, Gnar, Teemo, Malphite, Silas, and Cho'Gath to have an absolute field day. The reason Mundo thrives so much in those matchups specifically is due to his ability to stack magic resist and most importantly spirit visage. Take note Mundo does still struggle into ignite top laners like Garen and Camille which is completely understandable due to the fact Grievous Wounds shuts him down pretty hard. Especially if you're in the lower ranks and wanting to play Mundo then banning out Garen is a great idea. The build for Mundo top is a Frostfire Gauntlet Rush into Spirit Visage 2nd and Thornmail 3rd. Runes are Grasp of the Undying with Demolish, Conditioning, and Overgrowth. For secondaries, roll with Free Boots and Approach Velocity from Inspiration. The jungle meta has seen it all in Season 11 with Udyr being the most OP pick a few patches back and now Morgana is the new broken pick for 11.8. 
These conventionally weak junglers are making a big statement, and as a result of Morgana's W damage buff to monsters, she's now an elite pick. If you told us that Morgana jungle would be the one to dethrone Hecarim as the best jungler in the game, we'd have likely dismissed it entirely. Our analysts predicted Morgana would end up the best jungler out of the five who received buffs, we just didn't expect her to become the best jungler in the entire game. The clear speed is absolutely nuts. If done optimally, you can finish a full clear in under 3 minutes which is just unheard of. This is without a leash as well, so if you have your bot lane help you out, the clear can be completed even faster. Morgana's ganks are no slouch if executed properly. Approach ganks in a similar way as to Lee Sin. Don't just throw out your Q blindly, walk up to the enemy and apply red buff. Make them juke themselves out and throw Q when it's guaranteed. Playing off your teammate's CC is also very important if they have an easier spell to land. Wait for something like Nautilus Hook to connect first, and then follow with Bind on the motionless target. A nerf seems inevitable coming up in 11.9, so look to abuse this while it lasts. Matchup wise, only a few AD junglers like Kha'Zix and Master Yi can give you some issues, so banning Kha'Zix would be advisable due to his high play rate. The build is Landry's Rush into Zanya's second and Demonic Embrace third. Dark Harvest is the keystone with Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collector, and Ravenous Hunter. Secondaries are Transcendence and Water Walking. Another off-meta jungler you don't want to sleep on for 11.8 is Diana. The buff to Diana's passive has propelled her clear speed up a considerable amount and gives her way more strength than the meta. Few matchups are giving Diana a ton of trouble, however Udyr is one who's difficult to keep up with and can beat you up in early skirmishes, so banning him out is a good idea. Similar to Morgana, the AoE damage allows Diana to blast through a clear and stay really healthy due to the shield from W. If you're looking for a little more early dueling power, then choosing Diana over Morgana would be the way to go. Instead of Electrocute like we see on Diana mid, you'll take Conqueror in the jungle to amplify your 1v1 strength. Follow with Triumph, Tenacity, and Last Stand for primaries. Sudden Impact and Ravenous Hunter are the best secondary options. Rushing a Nasher's Tooth is also starting to become meta as it helps Diana breeze through her clear even faster and provides great sustained damage potential with that Conqueror. Night Harvester is completely viable as a rush as well though, so test both out and see what you prefer. Whichever you don't build first, pick up second. Third item, Zanya works well to provide you with a stronger team fight in the later stages of the game. As if Diana and Morgana jungle weren't off meta enough, we have an even crazier one in Lee Sin mid. The buff to Lee Sin's E cooldown have made this all possible, as the pushing power is so much stronger now. Lee Sin E was reduced by a whole 2 seconds, which may not seem like a lot, but for a spell that was on a 10 second cooldown before, a 2 second buff is pretty substantial. This change allows Lee to acquire early priority, especially in melee matchups, and participate in early skirmishes where he can thrive. The shield from Lee W gives him a surprising amount of durability early on in lane, and his ability to set up ganks by using W onto a minion and then E to slow the enemy laner is really great too. The lifesteal from W lets you heal off minions, so your sustain in lane is way better than most mid laners. The only meta mids who are giving Lee some issues this patch are Diana and Zed, so ban one of them out and you'll be smooth sailing. Build wise, rush one of Prowler's Claw or Eclipse depending on the game. When snowballing or in a really easy matchup, Prowler's Claw can work amazing. In matchups where outplaying with mobility isn't as reliable, then Eclipse is nice to provide some more durability. Edge of Night 2nd and Sterix 3rd is standard to round out your core build. Take Electrocute as the keystone for some nasty bursts with Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collector, and Ravenous Hunter. Secondary runes will be Bone Plating and Revitalize to provide you even stronger early dueling. With Vayne in a really strong spot at the moment, players have started to pull her out in the mid lane as a great counter to meta champs. The strong mobility and kiting power allows Vayne to thrive against highly picked mids like Yone, Silas, Galio, and Katarina. It's nearly impossible for Yone to ever deal damage to Vayne, as his Q will be tumbled away from every time, and if he ever does manage to hit one, Condemn just knocks Yone away. As long as you tumble to dodge these melee mids skill shots, then you'll always beat them out in extended trades. Vayne's always been known for her disgusting scaling strength, but her lane phase is just as good in these matchups. Yasuo is a really good ban if you plan on playing Vayne mid, as his wind wall is really annoying to deal with, while Yasuo's constant mobility makes it more difficult to kite. Rushing a shield bow turns Vayne into a pseudo bruiser and makes it very difficult for assassin or fighter mids to beat you 1v1. Phantom Dancer is the best second item purchased followed by Infinity Edge third. Press the attack is the best keystone with overheal, alacrity, and coup de gras. Domination secondary is the way to go, taking Taste of Blood and Ravenous Hunter. 
The most undervalued champion down in the bot lane for 11.8 is Carry Karthus. The consistent damage from Q combined with Running Exhaust as your secondary summoner allows Karthus to out damage every single ADC in the game early on. If paired with an aggressive support who can either poke or provide strong, hard engage, Karthus can run away with the lane. Keep in mind, Karth also scales like a beast, so there are very few downsides to picking the champ. The global damage from ult at level 6 allows Karthus to be useful no matter the outcome of bot lane, which makes him even more reliable. In games where your team is in desperate need of an AP damage threat, there's nothing better than Karthus bot for 11.8. It's always good to have an AP bot laner in your champion pool, since AD mids like Yasuo, Yone, and Zed are picked more than ever at the moment. You'll start off by rushing Leandris, build a Zanya second, and finish with Rabadon's third. Dark Harvest is by far the best keystone, followed up with Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collector, and Ravenous Hunter. Precision Secondary is the most optimal, rolling with Presence of Mind and Coup de Gras. The changes to support items for 11.8 have left Shirelia's extremely overtuned on enchanters. We already covered Lulu with Shirelia's in our Korean builds video, however, not just Lulu, but every single enchanter should be purchasing Shirelia's this patch. The item was changed in a way that removed the damage from the active in exchange for extra move speed from the passive. This extra move speed is procced when you empower or protect an ally, which is what makes it so great on these heal and shield supports. The consistent mobility allows you and your carries to kite out fights much better and keep those dive champions off you. With picks like Hecarim, Udyr, Volibear, along with many other chem tank abusers running rampant, Shirelius is the perfect item to shut them down. The win rate of Shirelius compared to Moonstone on these enchanters is pretty ridiculous for 11.8, as all of them are winning at least 3-5% more with Shirelius. Moonstone just isn't as great anymore after the changes, and it's time for Shirelius to take the spotlight. A sample full build to run on your enchanters is Shirelius into Staff of Flowing Water 2nd and Ardent Sensor 3rd. And lastly guys, the final OP off meta feature this patch is a build on tanky or engaged supports consisting of a frozen heart second. The armor on frozen heart was increased from 70 up to 80 for 11.8, which equates to 200 gold worth of stats for free. Frozen heart is one of the more cheaper defensive options as it only costs 2500 gold, making it very accessible on supports. The build has already been heavily adopted on Bard as the item wins over 3% more than the most popular Deadman's Plate. Now of course you don't want to autopilot into building the item every game as it works well in specific situations, which is why it has such a high win rate. When playing against an enemy composition consisting of heavy AD or against many auto attack reliant picks, that's where you purchase Frozen Heart. The passive reduces the enemy's attack speed and damage, which limits their damage per second in fights. Say for example the enemy team has a Trindamir top, Shinzao jungle, and Yasuo mid, you'd have a prime angle to pick up Frozen Heart. So on champs like Bard, Blitzcrank, Nautilus, Leona, and any other aggressive engaged supports, enjoy some free low by abusing Frozen Heart second in 11.8. And remember, if you want to improve fast and get the rank you've always wanted, then check out skillcap.com, link in the description below. And with that said, we hope you enjoyed learning about all these OP off meta picks. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one down the road. Thanks for watching everyone, and we'll catch you back here soon.